What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today we're taking a look at the sneaker releases in the second half of April 2020 and I'll let you know what I think about each one of these releases and whether I think each one is going to sit on shelves or sell out. Obviously this month has been a little bit crazy and because of that a lot of releases have been pushed and a lot of releases have been changed and as you might have noticed this video is a little bit earlier than it usually would come in the middle of the month. Now the reason for that is that so many releases moved and so many releases changed I really wanted to update the list so that you guys had a better idea of what's going on and sadly a lot of stuff Stuff got moved out of April, stuff that I really was excited about like the Fire Red 5s. So to be real, not a lot of sneakers are releasing at the end of this month, but I do have to say that this is one of those quality over quantity situations because the shoes that we do have releasing are pretty great. Really quick, before we jump into things though, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that this channel is not the only place that I put out content. I actually have a whole second channel where I unbox everything else besides sneakers, which is a lot of fun, which you guys should definitely check out. And if you're a fan of live streaming, I actually live stream pretty often over on my Twitch channel. Both my second channel and my live channel are linked at the top of the description so if you guys need more content to consume because you guys have run out of content on this channel make sure to check those areas out so with all of that out of the way why don't we jump right into the releases starting things off with a day that we covered in the previous video April 11th we've got two releases that actually got pushed back to this date the first of those releases is the highly anticipated Air Jordan 1 court purple 2020 honestly these court purples are one of my most anticipated releases of the entire year I've been looking forward to these shoes for so long and as you guys know Jordan 1 are like my favorite silhouette. Purple is one of those colors that you don't usually wear in a pair of sneakers, but when it's done right, it's one of those shoes that you definitely have to pick up. And I think the Air Jordan 1 Court Purple 2020s were done perfectly. I did a review for the Court Purple 2.0s a little while back, so if you guys want to check out that video, there'll be a link at the top of the screen. But in all seriousness, this is an awesome pair of sneakers, and if you're a fan of the Air Jordan 1s, this is definitely a pair worth picking up. And I'm sure you've all figured it out by this point, but I think the Air Jordan 1 Court Purple 2020s are gonna sell out. And then rounding off the 11th, we've got another very highly anticipated release with the Adidas Yeezy 700 V3 Alba. As I'm sure a lot of you guys saw if you're subscribed to the channel, I just reviewed this shoe yesterday. And if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to check it out through the link at the top of the screen. I genuinely think the Yeezy 700 V3 Alba is one of the best Yeezys to release this year. And even though it's just a triple black sneaker, it's one of those shoes that you can keep looking at and keep finding new things about the design. Like the Azael colorway from last year, the upper of this sneaker also glows, however it doesn't glow as bright because obviously the rubber is black instead of a lighter color and just like last year's colorway it's definitely a shoe that you want to grab in a half size up because the fit is very very snug the adidas yeezy 700 v3 alva is definitely a sneaker that i think is worth picking up and i think a lot of people feel the same way because i'm pretty sure this sneaker is going to sell out Moving on to April 16th, we've got the Nike Air Max 2090 in the wolf gray colorway. The Nike Air Max 2090 is the latest addition to the Nike Air Max family and is actually technically an updated version of the Nike Air Max 90 for its 30th anniversary. The sneaker itself is a pretty modern look and as the name would suggest, it comes in the wolf gray colorway. The shoe comes with two types of midsole cushioning. The front half of the sneaker comes with some sort of foam, which I would assume would be React, and then the back half comes with an air unit. It's a pretty decent shoe and if for some reason you've been looking for a gray pair of the 2090s, Now's your chance. But most likely, I think the shoe is going to be a GR, and for that reason, I think the shoe is gonna sit. Next up, we've got the women's Air Jordan 4 Do the Right Thing. This Air Jordan 4 comes in sort of a Rasta theme with a white, gray, green, yellow, and red colorway. Obviously, it's a women's only colorway, so if you're a dude who wants to grab this pair of sneakers, hopefully your feet are small enough to fit. The shoe itself looks all right. It's not something that's personally on my radar because I'm not a huge fan of the colorway, but I know there are people out there who are pretty stoked on this shoe. It actually also has sort of a white cement vibe because you've got some splatter print on the gray accents on both the midsole and on the heel. This is one of those colorways that I think is nice, but not really anything special and so for that reason I think the shoe is gonna sit. Then moving on to April 17th, we've got the brand new Nike KD13 in black and white. This is actually the second colorway of the KD13 to release. The first colorway was sort of the Migos themed colorway that dropped on April 10th. This is most likely going to be the GR version of the KD13, the pair that releases so that everyone can grab a pair. And to be honest, it's not a bad looking pair of sneakers. It's a black and white sneaker with a blue accent and it kind of just looks like a standard performance basketball sneaker. And so because of that, I think the shoe is gonna sit. And then after that, we've got the Nike LeBron 17 Low, black, white, and gold. Out of all the Nike LeBron 17 Lows, this one is actually my favorite. This is a shoe that I would consider picking up, and I'm not a fan of the LeBron 17 Low. Maybe I'm just a sucker for black, white, and gold. It's just one of those colorways that's always so clean, and I think they did a really great job on this sneaker. I've never played in the LeBron 17, and I probably won't get to for a couple months, so this is not a sneaker that I really feel like picking up because I'd only really grab it to play basketball in, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who love this shoe and will go out to the 
the store and grab it when the stores reopen. So I guess just online. I don't know why I said that. Metaphorically go out to the store, meaning buy it online. I wouldn't be surprised if this shoe was a general release and because of that, I think this shoe is probably going to sit. Moving on to the next day, April 18th, we've got the highly anticipated Air Jordan 6 DNP. This has started to happen pretty frequently and it actually started like two years ago when the Adidas Yeezy Quantum was first announced and it kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed, but it's happening even more now because of obvious reasons. The Air Jordan 6 DNP has been in like three sitter cell videos by this point and it was actually in the last sitter cell video which I dropped less than a week ago. This shoe keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and I think finally, because it's shown up on the sneakers app, we are getting the Air Jordan 6 DMP on April 18th. Now, you never know, I wouldn't be surprised if it got pushed back again, but I think we finally hit that point where if it doesn't come out, it's never gonna come out. So a little bit of backstory on this Air Jordan 6. DMP stands for Defining Moments Pack, and this shoe used to be part of a pack, and this is also the first time that this shoe is retro. I've said a few times that I think this shoe should be called the Defining Moments Air Jordan 6, and not the Air Jordan 6 DMP, because it's no longer part of a pack, but what do I know? It's like ATM machine. The sneaker itself looks great. It's an all black Air Jordan 6 with gold accents and an icy blue outsole, and to be honest, it's one of the best Air Jordan 6s to ever release. I honestly don't know how limited this shoe is going to be, but I know a lot of people got early pairs, which leads me to believe it's going to be somewhat limited, but not insanely limited. And so while I don't think it's gonna be impossible to get, I think if you want this sneaker, make sure to be there at 10 o'clock on April 18th on the sneakers app, because I'm pretty sure this shoe will sell out. And then rounding off April 18th, we've got another Adidas Yeezy sneaker dropping with the Adidas Yeezy 350 V2 linen. This shoe is sort of a tan 350 V2 with this really nice light blue accent around the top of the ankle. It also looks like it has a 3M stripe on the side of the sneaker, which leads me to believe that there won't be a reflective version of the shoe releasing. For whatever reason, I think this is my favorite 350 V2 to drop this year. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the blue and the tan combination, although I do think that's dope. I'm not sure, but I really like this sneaker and this might be one of the only 350 V2 that I keep from this year. We'll definitely have to wait and see what happens though because I haven't been keeping a lot of my Yeezy sneakers. Other than the colorway, this 350 V2 is pretty much exactly the same as all the previous pairs and if you want a pair of 350 V2s and you don't have one or maybe you love this colorway, this is definitely a sneaker worth picking up. And of course, it's a 350 V2 which means it's definitely going to sell out. Then on April 23rd, we've got the Jordan Why Not 0.3 Black Cement. Over the last couple months, we've had a lot of different 0.3 colorways releasing, and I think the Black Cement might actually be a lot of people's favorite. And for obvious reasons, because the Black Cement 3 is one of the most popular sneakers ever made, and it's kind of interesting because this is the third Westbrook 0.3, so it's kind of like... Well, it's actually kind of like a BC3. As you probably already guessed, the shoe comes in a primarily black upper with elephant print on the heel and on the forefoot. And of course, it's also got some red accents sort of sprinkled throughout the sneaker. But even though this shoe has one of the most popular colorways of all time, it's still not one of the most popular silhouettes of all time. In fact, the 0.3 is one of those sneakers that people pick up if they want to play basketball, but that's really the only reason to grab this shoe. And so because of that, even though the sneaker has a great colorway, I just don't see it selling out. Then on April 24th, we've got the Nike Kyrie 6 USA. I'm pretty sure the theme of this sneaker was the USA Olympic team, but because the Olympics have been pushed back to 2021, I guess it's just a United States theme. This Kyrie 6 comes in a primarily dark navy upper with red and white accents all over the shoe. In fact, it's actually got a split red and white Nike swoosh, which I think is kind of cool. At the end of the day, it's a Kyrie 6, which is a great performance basketball sneaker, and there's a lot of Kyrie collectors out there, so I think those people will be picking up the shoe, but I don't think anyone else really will. So for that reason, I think the shoe is going to sit. And then finishing off April 24th, we've got the chili colorway of the Nike KD-13. This is definitely my favorite colorway of the KD-13, at least so far. It's not often that you get really nice green colorways, and I think this is one of the best green colorways to drop on any sneaker, at least that we've seen this year. The chili KD-13 comes in a tonal green and gold upper, and out of the two special edition KD-13s that are releasing this month, I think this is by far the best, because the Migos colorway, while some people might like it, it's not for me. The chili colorway, on the other hand, is simple, it's clean, and it's green. <laughs> it's a great looking pair of sneakers. As I sort of hinted at, I do think this shoe will be somewhat limited, and because of that, I think there's gonna be a lot more demand than there usually would be for a pair of KD-13s. And as we all know in the sneaker community, demand equals hype, and when a sneaker is hyped up, it usually sells out. And so because of that, I think this shoe will have just enough hype to make the limited quantity of this sneaker actually sell out. 
Then moving on to April 25th, we've got a pair of shoes that I'm very excited about, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to drop. And that pair is the Nike Air Fear of God 1 in the triple black colorway. The reason I'm not 100% sure that this sneaker is going to drop, even though the release date has leaked a couple times, is that we haven't seen many pairs out in the wild, and usually before a sneaker drops, you see people rocking the pair, at least on Instagram. Honestly, I haven't seen any new images of this sneaker that we haven't already seen from a couple months ago, and there hasn't been any official word from Fear of God or from Nike, which really leads me to believe that this shoe is probably going to be pushed back. But with all that being said, we can still hope that it's gonna drop, and I really do hope it's gonna drop because I think it's one of the best Fear of God colorways to drop so far. Obviously, this shoe would drop in an all-black color scheme, which I think would be a lot easier to wear than some of the previous pairs, especially since it's already kind of an awkward sneaker to wear in general. And it's actually a pair of Fear of God ones that I would be really excited to at least try and rock because if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know I have trouble rocking those Fear of God ones. I don't know what it is. It's probably, it's probably the hype, to be honest with you. Hopefully the Sphere of God 1 drops on April 25th, like currently rumored, but again, I wouldn't be surprised if it got pushed back. And obviously when this sneaker actually does drop, it's definitely going to sell out. And then rounding off April 25th, we've got the Adidas Yeezy 700 MNVN in the bone colorway. I'm just realizing that on all of these days that we've talked about in the video, there haven't been more than two sneaker releases. I mean, I'm sure there's like some random colorways of sneakers that no one cares about dropping that I wouldn't usually cover in the video, but out of all the shoes that are dropping that we do care about, there haven't been that many. But like I said, this is definitely a quality over quantity sort of month, and I'm okay with that. The 700 MNVN is definitely a departure from any of the previous 700s in that it's got this interesting sort of nylon upper and sort of an infinite lace loop that doesn't actually allow you to tie the shoe, you can only really pull it tight. But the standout feature of the MNVN is the 3M700 text on the lateral side of the sneaker that really grabs people's attention. Personally, this is not one of my favorite MNVN colorways. I think the green colorway and the orange colorway take that spot, but it's not a bad looking pair of shoes and if I can get it for retail, I might grab it. So far, pretty much all of the MNVN colorways that have dropped have been regional releases, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually one that most people can get around the world. I don't really have anything to back that claim up, but I haven't seen anything about the shoe only dropping in certain areas, so that's why I think that. But whether the shoe drops regionally or all over the world, I definitely think it's a pair of Yeezys that people are pretty excited about, and so for that reason, I think this shoe is gonna sell. And then ending today's video on April 30th, we've got the Nike Pegasus 37. Nike's Pegasus line has always been their most popular running line, and every year they release a new sneaker which never really sells out, but always is one of their staples when it comes to their sales. And the Nike Pegasus 37 seems to be no different. It's a basic, no-nonsense running sneaker, except this time around, it actually features React in the midsole. Visually, the 37 does look pretty similar to the 36 and the 35 for that matter, but I do think there are some small details around the sneaker that just make it look that much better. It's a simple shoe, but one that I think a lot of runners and a lot of non-sneaker heads will be picking up. And while I don't think it'll sell out, I do think it'll sell incredibly well. So I guess because I have to give this shoe a rating, I'm gonna give it a sit. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Now I would love to know your thoughts on these releases and which shoes you're looking forward to most. So let me know in the comment section down below. Also don't forget to check out my second channel and my Twitch channel which are both linked in the top of the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.